Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. As you might know, a while ago there was the Steam Festival, it lasted for a week. Now I'm a bit late with this video, I was quite sick for the past two weeks, so I'm a bit late, but better late than never, I definitely want to make sure that I make this video. My goal with this devlog series is full transparency. So first let's look at the raw number of wishlists, impressions, play duration and more. Then I'll give you my analysis on whether the festival was a success. And in the end, I'll also mention what are my plans with the game going forward. Okay, so first for some raw numbers. I believe this was the biggest festival of all, with over 1200 demos, so that means quite a lot of competition for players in just one week. During the festival, my game demo was played by 1591 people and 5300 added it to their account. It got 855 wishlists, taking it from 1550 to 2405. The average demo playtime was 50 minutes and the median was 13 minutes. In terms of views, during the festival the game got 600,000 impressions and 11,000 visits. During the festival, I also did two live streams and used Steam's event feature to promote them and show the live stream on the Steam page. And I also constantly updated the game with 12 updates over the course of that one week. So those are the hard numbers. Now before I get to my analysis, first of all, if you're an indie dev, what exactly is a Steam Festival? In terms of indie game marketing, Steam Festivals are an absolute must nowadays. They are a great way to get a bunch of exposure and hopefully gather tons of wishlists to ensure you have a successful launch. There are multiple Steam Festivals per year. In order to participate in one, your game needs to have a working demo, it needs to have a publicly coming soon page, and importantly, you can only participate in a single Steam Festival before release. If you're new to indie game marketing, I highly recommend you go watch my marketing video. If you want to find success with your games, then marketing is an absolute must nowadays, so you must know about it. Okay, so now here's my analysis on whether this was a success or not. The answer is, honestly, it depends. Some parts of it went great, and some parts not so great. First for the positive, the most positive thing was the response to the demo, the feedback that I got. There were obviously tons of issues since the demo was only an alpha, but in general, the general concept of the game, people did seem to enjoy it. I've also had some publisher interest from some pretty serious publishers, so that means the core game idea is solid. However, at the same time, while the response has been very positive, I have to be very careful about how I take that. Most of the people that played the demo, I assume were people just like you, meaning people over here watching this channel. Now, I assume that if you're a regular viewer on this channel, I assume that means that you enjoy what I do, I assume that means my videos have been helpful to you in some way, so that means that the feedback that I got is very likely biased towards the positive side. Whereas on a final release, regular Steam players have no idea who I am, so they will not have that bias. So personally, I have to be very careful not to be caught up in all of this positive feedback and assume that it represents the regular Steam audience, because it might not. This is the same advice that I would give to you whenever you ask your friends or family for advice and feedback on your game, when you do, remember that your friends, they're not really going to be brutally honest with you. They're always going to be a bit more nice than the usual, so always keep that in mind when receiving feedback. Now, speaking of the regular Steam audience, that brings me to the other side that didn't go quite as well, and that is actually the numbers. I was really hoping to get a bare minimum of a thousand wishlists, so getting just 850, that is quite rough. With this low amount, it makes the goal of launching the game with at least 5,000 wishlists, that makes that goal really difficult to achieve. I'm going to talk about my future plans in a little bit. And also 1500 players playing the demo, that is also a really small amount. I do wonder how many of those are actually people over here watching this channel. I would assume it's actually the vast majority, which means the demo really did not get any organic visibility at all. For some context, one excellent source that I've mentioned a few times is Chris Sikowski from How to Market Your Game. He made a real nice post with a ton of stats from last year's festival. In general, the median number of wishlists were about 1100 and that seemed to be on an uptrend. So getting quite a lot fewer than that amount is definitely not ideal. Now as to why I think the demo got subpar performance, I think the answer is simply that I was way too ambitious with a super tight deadline. On the one hand, the massive improvements that I managed to do in the 12 updates that I put out whilst the game demo was live on the festival, that was really impressive. But on the other hand, that really puts into perspective just how weak the very first build for the demo was. The median play duration was under 9 minutes, that is really low. With all the updates, that did improve massively, but that didn't seem to matter by that point. I'm not entirely sure how exactly the Steam algorithm works for this case, for Steam festivals, but perhaps launching with a subpar demo caused the algorithm to essentially ignore the demo for the rest of the festival, and that is why it did not get much or any organic visibility. Now, in an ideal world, I would obviously delay the demo until I had it working exactly as I wanted, but I cannot control the timing for the Steam festivals. If I didn't participate in this one, then I would have to delay the demo until all the way over to October. So, in general, the question, was the Steam festival a success? Now, in terms of numbers, the answer is no, not at all. But in terms of feedback, I would say the answer is definitely yes. The feedback was very positive, and personally, I'm still very confident in the game. I do think the game is in a really great state right now, and I'm really happy with how it's going. I'm really excited for the future and for the final full release. If I can build everything that I have in my head, then I do believe the final game will be great. And now as to what are my plans for the game for the future. 
Honestly, at this point, I'm not entirely 100% sure. The initial plan was to prioritize this project over the many other things that I would like to do. If I focus primarily just on this project, I'm pretty confident that I could get it done by sometime to mid and late August. I know that I can be extremely productive if I focus on one thing and one thing only, but with the current wishlist rate of just about 10 wishlists per day, with that, if I were to release the game in about a month and a half, that would mean really just about 300 to 500 wishlists. So the total would be just about 3000, which is a very low amount. Launching with so few wishlists really makes it difficult for the game to find success regardless of quality. Now I'm really enjoying the game, I do think it's in a great place right now, I'm really enjoying the design and testing it, so I do believe the game has a lot of potential to turn out really great. So the question is, do I launch the game with a low wishlist amount and potentially risk it becoming a flop even if the game ends up being great? Or do I take a bit longer to gather a few more wishlists and hopefully launch with better numbers so I can find more success? Now I really, really want to launch a game this year, so unless something really drastic happens, I am not planning to push the release date any way past something like October, but I do have those two options. So do I focus primarily on this game and work on it essentially full time and get it done by about mid to late August? Or do I work on it more part time? So kind of mixing working on the game with working on other projects like exploring dots or random tutorials or working on more multiplayer videos. I could potentially make a more advanced multiplayer course based on all the things that I learned in this game. And at the same time, keep working on the game essentially part time and launch much later on, something like October. So those are the two options. And like I said right now, I'm still not sure. I'm trying to put myself on the other side of this equation. If someone had this exact dilemma and they came to me for advice, what would I say? I think that what I would say would be, if this is your first game, then just go ahead and launch it. Don't wait any longer. Launching your very first game is super important. You will gain so much more knowledge and it's highly unlikely to ever find financial success. So for your first game, you should just launch it. But obviously that is not my case. It's not my first game. So what I would say, if this is not your first game, if your goal with this game is to find some level of financial success, if so, then my advice is if you believe the idea, then you should keep working on it and keep slowly gathering wishlists. So after thinking like that, maybe I should take my own hypothetical advice and do exactly that. Honestly, making these devlog videos is hopefully interesting to you to see the inner workings behind a proper Steam game, but these are also extremely useful for me to essentially put my thoughts out on paper and really think through. That really helps with decisions like this one. So after spending all the time writing this video, I think I now know the answer. I think I will keep working on this game part-time alongside all the other projects that I want to do. I will keep doing devlogs and experimenting with other formats. I know some other devs have found tons of success on TikTok and Instagram, so I'm definitely trying out that format. I will keep doing that and essentially plan for release around October. With that, I should have time to release something like 10 to 15 devlogs and perhaps 20 plus shorts. And with all of those, hopefully some of those will go semi-viral and gather tons of wishlists. With that, then hopefully that will turn into a total wishlist amount that is really nice by October, and then I can launch the game, and hopefully the final game is great, so it does find success. So that's it, that's my current plan. Alright, so that's my results and my analysis of the Steam Festival. I hope you found this interesting, and I hope this helps you when you go to participate in your own Steam Festival. Now I got to get back to working on the game, as well as many other projects. And of course, go ahead and add Dinky Gardens to your wishlist and try out the demo. Alright, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.